Hello, welcome back to the True Crime Lounge Podcast. I do have a YouTube channel that you can go and check out. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and f- for any updates, I also have a merch shop as well as a Patreon that you can also join. Um, by joining Patreon, you will receive early access to episodes as well as now as well. Now, let's grab our drink of choice and we'll dive into today's episode of the True Crime Lounge. This is a pre-recorded episode, so, um, and it's set to come out. November 14, 2023 at 6 o'clock. We are over halfway through our season and I am excited because starting in January, I will release season 3 of True Crime Lounge with a new theme. Now, let's talk about Sound Bass. Sound bass, please. Sam Bass. As <clears throat> far as I know, he's not related to Lance Bass. But on that topic, is anybody else excited seeing them again to get together again? I know I am personally. Um, I think that might be my age coming out. But anyway, anyway, Bass was born July twenty first, eighteen fifty one, near Mitchell, Indiana. He died July twenty first, eighteen seventy eight, in Round Rock, Texas. He was an American outlaw that was gunned down by Texas Rangers. He left his home at the age of 18 and went to Texas. In 1974, well, 1874, that was a mistake on my typing. I'm glad I caught that. <clears throat> he befriends Joel Collins. And then in, 19, in 1876, Bass and Collins went north for, on a cattle drive but turned to robbing coach stagecoaches. Then in 1877 in Blue Springs, Nebraska, Bass, Collins, and four others were robbed of a Union Pacific train of, 60, of 65000 in gold and other valuables. He would return to Texas and collect a gang <coughs> and began a less successful career of train robbery with Texas Rangers in pursuit. In July 1978, a uh, former crony, Jim Murphy, tipped off the Rangers, who ambushed and wounded Bass. He was attempting a bank robbery in Round Rock, and he would die two days later on his birthday. His career became the stuff that legends <clears throat> his that legends with a popular cowboy song would call the Ballad of Sam Bass. So, the legend has grown out of proportion in relation to his actual deeds. A book collector claims that he has over 200 titles that deal with Sam Bass in some ways. One of Round Rock's major street bears, his name to uh, several businesses, Texas history has often referred to him as Texas Beloved Bandit or Robin Hood on a Fast Horse. Interesting. So, in actuality, Sam was probably more in- inept than brave or noble. He appears to never realize that robbing trains and banks or anything of amusing diversion. For him, it was a mere sport, the reality that often was injured, either physically or financially, and appears to have surfaced on a shallow conscience. So, <clears throat> as the legend, the accounts of Sam's life are varied. And number of individuals telling the fate for the events leading up to the shootout all of the stories have gathered uh, readers to examine thus throughout the narrative differing views are presented the basic storyline remains the different accounts however are offered to allow the reader to appreciate a full extent into the legends <clears throat> that have grown up around Sound Bass. So, Bass was born in Indiana, and, as everyone who's heard the ballad of Sound Bass knows, born on a farm two miles from Mich- Mitchell, Indiana, on July 21st, 1851, he was soon orphaned, and he and his brother and sisters moved to a nearby town to live with their uncle and children. As a child, Sam received no formal schooling, and he chose to strike out <clears throat> in 1869. Sam traveled down to Mississippi to Rosendale, Mississippi, 
where he worked for a year in Charles Mill. It was here that he learned how to handle a pistol and honed his car to play, play his card playing skills. In 1870, he met up with he met up with Scott Mays, a teamster headed to Denton, Texas, where Sam had always been taken with the idea of moving to Texas, becoming a cowboy, and he took his chance. The two arrived in Denton, and Sam found employment with Sheriff W. F. Dad Egan, who would later spend much time, much effort searching for the outlaw. Sheriff Egan employed Sam not as a deputy but as a farmhand. He curried the horses, milked the cows, cut firewood, but most importantly, he spent some time as a teamster. It was in this position that he became acquainted with the county and learned all of the trails, back roads, tick and thickets, where he would later allude to the Texas Rangers. He used to allude Texas Rangers. And didn't he was Sam was considered to be a hard worker and was known for his thriftiness. It was here that he met many of his friends were whom were engaged in unlawful activities. Saving his earnings he would be able to purchase a fifteen hand mare, referred to as the Denton mare. The racehorse was fast and soon earned Sam enough money for him to quit his job with Sheriff Egan and retire to a life of horse racing, gambling, and saloon patronizing. In 1875, he, Sam never again ha held a permanent job, living on his gambling proceeds and eventually on thieving. So, in December 1875, he met Joel Collins in San Antonio. Together, they decided to run a herd of cattle to the northern markets. This eventually took place to Nebraska, where they sold the herd and used the money to take gold prospecting to the Black Hills. The venture left the two broke in the offset lo in the offset their losses. They turned to robbing stages in association with Jack Davis and another man known as Dixon Nixon. Um, they held seven stages over um, the next m few months. The Black Hill Bandits, as the gang was known, tried to tout their pony funny payoffs from the stage robberies, turned their attention to the lucrative crime of train robbery. So, let's talk about their train robberies. Well, the first job took place at Blue Springs Hill Station, Nebraska, at 10.48 on September 18, 1877, under a big moon. The bandits forced their station master to signal the coming express train and then halt <clears throat> and then boarded. Finding only $450 in a way safe, they brilliantly boot the express manager with a pistol in an attempt to force him into through the safe, which held time lock preventing for it to become open until the train reached its destination. Finding some wooden boxes, and the bandits broke over, revealing $60,000 worth of freshly minted $20 gold pieces and headed to San Francisco, meant to, Eastern, <clears throat> to an eastern bank. Only known authentic, authentic size, authenticated photo of Sam Bass, Joe, Joe, Joe Collins, John G Gardner, Joel Collins. So... The bandits divided the gold and the coins into six ways, and then the pair split up, each pair handling hand, heading in different ways. Joel Collins and his partner was shot and killed a week later. Another pair, composed of James Barry and Nixon, was split up by Barry and was captured. Nixon, it is assumed, escaped with his share to Canada. The third pair, Sam and Jack Davis, rode south on one horse buggy. There share of the hall stowed underneath the seat. At some point on their way to back to on their trip back to Texas, Sam and Jack were joined by a company of soldiers and detectives who were searching for the train robbers. Sam and Jack convinced these men that they were searching for the bandits too in hopes that they would receive a large reward. After four days, Sam and Jack split from the other men and rode back to Denton. Um once in Denton, Sam had 
explain his newfound wealth f from a strike he made in prospecting the Black Hills. His money and good spirits attracted many people, some of whom were considered later become part of the Sam Bass game when he was robbing at trains. It is assumed that Sam ow, <clears throat> would have reached Denton by late autumn. Yet by February 1878, Bass had begun train robbers again. Why? Because he had spent $10,000 in less than four months. And many believed that there was no way he could have spent that money. So they speculated that Bass hid his gold. So stories bound individuals as to searching for the gold. One story places the hidden gold in a cave in the East Mountains of Minimal Wells in Grigsby. Another legend speculates that he held the gold until he handed headed to Round Rock to rob a bank, hiding the gold in a cave west of Prairie Dale, near Big Blue Springs for safekeeping during the robbery. So if anyone ever found it found the bass gold, they never reported it. Since it is since it is hard to imagine, hard to imagine that Sam could use it all of the gold before he started robbing it, lends um credence to the story that Sam robbed the robbed for the sport, more for the profit. Whatever the reason, the Sam Bass Gang stood up to Texas Central train, stood Central at Allen Station, February twenty second, nineteen seventy eight. This holdup netted the gang thirteen hundred dollars in on March eighteenth, and they again held up the Texas Central this time at Hutchins. The Texas and Pacific Railroad was hit April fourth at Eagle Ford, and again on the tenth of Mesquite. Only the first robbery resulted in any significant payroll from this style of these robberies, um, prompting each some of the observers to speculate that the robbers were extremely nervous and drunk, or the time of the holdups due to the fact that that during it. The whole of they would be missing stashes of money being hurried, hidden by messengers. During during the time of these Texas train robberies, the Sam Bass Games were staffed by Frank jo Jackson, Seaborn Barnes, Thomas Sportswood, Arkansas Johnson, Henry Underwood, Sam Pipes, and Albert Hurden. Bass and Burns took, pla took place in all four robberies. Jackson participated in three, Johnson in two, and the others in one. After the Mesquite robbery, a cry and indication went down from the people out in North Texas. The governor decided that it was time to call in the Texas Rangers and capture the bandits. Thus, the Bass War began. In 1878, there was a political ill ease where the state of Texas Reconstruction had just ended. <clears throat> At the state governor was still weak. C citizens were deeply concerned about the presence of the gang and bandits in the state, and the demand for law and order was sounded. This concern resulted in political action. Many political campaign as a platform as law and order and proposed a modern peacekeeping force to be formed. D. Texas Rangers, sensing from the threat to help the organization implied in this, chose to respond by proving that there was still an effective deterrent up to the crime. They chose Bass to be their example, and they set out to help capture him at any cost. The end result <clears throat> will be a death and capture of Sam, their new father of financial support for the Rangers. During the four months of the Bass Wars, the gang became the stuffed <coughs> legend. <clears throat> they led the rangers for long chases and narrow escapes, the gang relying on Sam's thorough knowledge of the back trails and thickets, learned during his days as a teamster, while sur suddenly surfaced area only to disappear at the first sign of trouble. The gang's success in avoiding capture and 
can be ascribed to be both difficulties of the terrain and inactives. In a desperate attempt to flush the game out, the rangers conducted a sweep of all residents suspected in harboring the bandits. This resulted in the arrest of both Jim Murphy and his father Henderson. Jim was taken to Tyler to face charges of robbery, robbing the U.S. mail, seeking immunity, and was interested in collecting the reward money. Jim agreed to rejoin in the Bass Gang and betray Sam to the Rangers. Thus, the stage was set for eventual Rangers triumphant over the Gang of Round Rock. The first clash of the Bass Wars occurred April 29th at Cove Hollow. The Rangers, under the direction of Captain Lee Hall, was able to take the gang by surprise while they were resting at Jim Murphy's house. Fleeing from the Rangers, Bass struck twice, once in the cartridge belt and another in the stock of its rifle. Without injury, as Sam left the scene, he was said to have other, Hey, old boys, they hit me at last. Let's get out of here. Undaunted, Sam was flashing his golden pieces around and living it up in North Texas towns. In July, a posse formed a gang in a gunfight in which Arkansas Johnson was killed and Henry Underwood rode off never to return to the gang. Now, with Jim Murphy looking to betray the gang to the Rangers, the gang decided to head to calmer areas in southern parts of the state. So, this leads us to the Round Rock Shootout. At some point on the way to Round Rock, <sighs> Jim Murphy was able to slip away from the gang and send a letter off to Major Jones of the Texas Ranger indicating that the gang was proceeding to Round Rock with the intention of robbing the bank. Major Jones was surprised to that to hear that the gang was moving so far south, he immediately directed the rangers directed the rangers Dick Ware, Chris Connor, and George Harrell to proceed to Round Rock and be on the lookout for any members of the Bass Gang. He then rode to Bass Rock with Deputy Sheriff Morris Moore of Travis County, Sam Frank Jackson, Seaborn Barnes, and Jim Judas Murphy. <laughs> Judas, I get it, arrived to Round Rock on the night of July 14th. Monday, there was, they went into town and the uh, bank to get, to get a shave. Sam Seaborn was stealing from the fresh, some fresh horses and hitting the bank as soon as possible. Murphy stalling for them suggested that stealing horses would only raise suspicion. So, ow. <sighs> So that they should rest, rest the horses and then rob the banks on Saturday. After that, after discussion, the gang decided that robbery would occur at 3:30 on Saturday, June, July 20th. So, on Friday the 19th, Sam, Frank, and Seaborn went to the town, the new town, to the case to bank one final time. Murphy has stayed behind at the old town in hopes of getting in contact with Major Jones. The band has hitched their horses in the northern alley of Georgetown Avenue in the corner of Lampeth and then the, walked up to the street of Corp Corporal's General Store located at southeast of Mays and Georgetown Avenue. At the same time, the Rangers Raider crossed the street from Highsmith Livey stable in the barber shop. He later called, said that he passed the bandits at some point without realizing who they were. As the bandits crossed over to the store, they were also observed by Morris Moore, a Travis County Je Deputy Sheriff and Deputy Sheriff Grimes of Williamson County. So, Grimes indicated that he believed that one of the strangers was wearing a pistol, which was supposedly against the law. Another account mentioned that Grimes, 
Grimes was there because of Sam and with two pistols. Whatever the reason, Grimes decided to investigate in the stranger's intentions. Walking up to the bandits who were purchasing tobacco in one store, Grimes told Sam, Do you have a pistol? To which Sam said, Yes, and I'll let you have it. But more important than that, he said, what he was was Frank and Seaborn who opened up the fire on gangs, killing him instantly. Grains never even had opportunity to draw his gun. Six bullets were found on his dead body. Moore, who had been waiting outside of the store, entered the, and opened fire bandits, shooting Bass on the, through the hand, and he was shot in the chest, a bullet piercing his, his lung, and was forced to discontinue the chase. The shooting attracted attention of rangers, a ranger rare, who was receiving a shave at the time, and he ran to the street, his face still lathered, and was simply eight inch, plain, seeing the single handedly playing bandits. The firing had been attracted, so the attention of Major Jones, who was, who was at the International and Great Northern Telegraph Office, at the time of initial shooting. Meeting up with the ranger rare, Jones fired fired was what was considered to be his only shot at the Texas Ranger at the fleeing gang. The bandits returned to the fire, missing Jones, but logging but lodging a bullet into the stone room behind him. Ware and Jones were also joined in flight for the time for a one armed man named Stubbs. Stubbs, Stubbs, Stubbs. Oh. Who had picked picked up Grimes' gun, opened the bandits. By the time he handed the bandits, had made their way back to the alley and were attempting to mount their horses. Ranger Harold, a local citizen named Connor, shot at the game with rifles. It was at this point Ranger Harold believes that it was he inflicted the mortal wound on Bass. See me tiniestly. Seaborn falls dead with a bullet in his hand. Who actually shot Sam Bass was never completely decided. The doctors examined Sam and noted that the bullet had hit a cartilage in his belt and then just two split parts passing near his groin. Ugh. The other part lodging his body, the statement it caused to the rangers, and assumed that Dick Ware was the one who administered the fatal blow. Further supporting the theory that by the account from Bass himself, who indicated that he had been shot and that the man shot him had ladder on his face. Of the official inquest, Ware replied that he did not believe that he shot Bass. However, he claimed that he did. Harold claimed that he did. This is went on to went on to the official record. However, Ware was credited with killing Seaborn Burns. Part of the confusion was actually Bass, who stems from fear of the Rangers and the Round Rock citizens. Such was the fame of, of Bass. And it is believed that the person who shot him will be subsequently killed by one of Bass's supporters. Thus, individuals were not anxious to be known by the person responsible for killing him. At some point, Seaborn's death and Sam's wounding, many witnesses attributed a great deal of gallantry for the young Frank Jackson with Seaborn dead in front of him. And his leader was fast injured. It was said that Frank coolly held a ranger at bay with his gun and he helped Sam to his horse. Together they made their escape from the firing citizens and the rangers. As the bandits were fleeing out of town, Frank, concerned about gunfire, had the presence of mind to warn little girl who was playing a tree to get in the house. Jim Murphy, who also stayed behind in Old Town during a shootout, 
reported that he saw Sam and Frank come up from the street. The Sam Bass shootout was no doubt an unifying un event for both the young town and the round town and gave citizens something to identify. Today, Sam Bass is not known as he was in the past. However, the city maintains its historical legacy, evidenced by the street marketers indicating the event of the celebrated shootout. That is it for today's episode. I will see y'all next time as we talk about Edit Place.